What's good, folks? Terry the Electrician here. And you already know, I'm out here in these streets, putting in that work. And uh, just had a conversation with uh, another service business owner who's uh, fairly young, fairly new to the game. Uh, he, he does appliance repair. And uh, he got this potential customer who gives him a call and the scenario was basically installing uh, all the all the appliances in, in, a, in a house, in a particular house. I guess either a newly renovated house or a brand new house, based on the conversation we just had. But as he got into the particulars with the potential customer, with the prospect, or at this point I will call the suspect, um, it, start, it started to sound a little sketchy. Uh, with the with the payment arrangements and this elaborate payment scheme, he wanted to you know wanted my guy to go through and all and it it just reminded me of a situation I had back in the day when I was doing a lot of the fix and flip when we, back before the housing bust. I said this was around 2005, 2006, and this one particular guy we must have wired five or ten houses for this guy. Not only that, he was he was one of these guys who was teaching new investors how to get in the game. So after we had wired several houses for this guy, you know, the money started getting funny. You know, he would take longer and longer to pay. Um, then he would want to make partial payments. Anyway, <clears throat> it got to a point where this dude wrote, wrote me a check for like $3,700, something like that. And I took it to, to a check cash. I was using a check cash at the time um, to, to, to get, go ahead and cash the checks rather than, than uh, always take them to my bank. For whatever reason, you know, just I had the quick, quick cash and it was close and, all, it, you know, whatever was going on back then. But this particular time, I took the check, they cashed it, and the check bounced. And uh, so... You know, naturally, they're looking at me sideways. I'm like, well, I didn't write the check. I mean, did you did you did you contact the, the the guy that wrote the check? So they did. They tried to get the money from him. They couldn't get the money from him. So they said, well, if we don't get the money from him, we're gonna have to come after you. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I said, all right. Um, so I'm calling this guy. I'm calling this guy, and he's making all these promises, and he's never coming through. Well, I got, I'll do this and I'll do that and, uh, and I'll meet you over here. And, and it's just for whatever reason, this, this, this like went on for weeks. And I was, you know, I was, uh, had been going to this check cash pretty regular. So they was working with me, but you know, I, you know, they got 3,700, you know, you know, they got their money. Cause you know, they took a little bit off, you know, from check, cash and check, but you know, over $3,000. And uh, so they looking at me sideways now. Like if I come in there with other checks, they looking at me like, okay, when you gonna take care of this other one? I'm like, bro, I'm trying to get this dude to pay, to take care of y'all, but I'm kind of stuck in the middle. I'm like, yeah, we understand that, but we gave you the money. So now I'm ready to crack head. I'm, and I'm not a violent person at all. Anybody, you got anybody that know me. I, they threatened to put me in jail, man. So, um, what ended up happening is he gave me some of the money. I took it back. I took it up there to the check casher, uh, you know, and it just, it just, like I said, it got drawn out over time. But it, it, we ended, he ended up taking care of it, but it put me in a in a real sketchy situation. So after that, this dude come to me again, want me to buy more houses, and I'm like, bro, after the last time. You gonna give me cash or a cashier's check or, or any, but if a check got your name on it, I ain't taking it. It came, it came down to the point where the, the, the lender would write the check directly to me, okay? Because I was like, no, nah, you got me one time, never again, never again. That was one of the most stressful periods of my freaking life. 
just dealing with that, that that one scenario, that one situation, it was so freaking stressful, it was ridiculous. So I learned a valuable lesson there. Um, and I'm not saying he did it intentionally. Like I said, looking back, you know, at, at what all was going on, I didn't really know what all was going on with the whole mortgage thing. Dude ended up doing 15 years in prison for mortgage fraud. And the, and the, and the thing about it is, he wasn't a bad dude. It's just that money, man. All that money just, you know, it, it do things to people. And then when you when you start getting into these these elaborate schemes of trying to manipulate and maneuver this and that, you, and other people get caught up into it, you know, it just leaves a bad taste in your mouth, man. It's just it's crazy. And that's one of the things you got to deal with as a business owner. Man, you just don't know, man. You, but like I said, as as uh, dude was ex explaining the. The scenario to me, I'm like, bro, that, nah, that sound too sketchy. There's just too many moving parts. So that's how I'm barely, but what I said, I said that sounds like fraud. I said, they, that's what it sounds like. They trying to pull, he trying to pull one and you going you will end up caught up in, in the middle of this. And yeah, you know, you know, run, don't walk, run <laughs> because it just, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. The moral of the story is all money ain't good money. And you gotta be on your P's and Q's uh, out here, you know, when you when you running your running your business. You gotta stay on top of your game.